a few years ago I did a tutorial on modeling a simple watch or really just a watch body and since then a number of people have asked uh, if I had the reference image for that which I don't anymore and so I've decided that I'm going to do another version of that tutorial for relative beginners and so here I am in whatever version of blender I have right now and you may see this down the road but uh, we're gonna go ahead and do that so I'm gonna press a and X delete everything I'm gonna press 1 and look from the front so I'm in front orthographic view and I'm going to bring in the reference image which you can download and hopefully in the future it will still be available if not write to me and I'll make another video all right you're gonna press shift a and go to image reference and then navigate to where you've got the image this is the one I'm going to be using press load so it's there now I want to make that a little bit bigger bigger so I'm gonna press s3 to scale it three times and I'm gonna press three to look from the side. I'm gonna make sure that my move tool is turned on and I'm gonna pull it back along the Y, this green axis. Axis, I'm gonna press one. And now I'm looking from the front and I've got a little bit of room between my 3D cursor, which is right in the middle and the actual reference. Okay, I'm going to move the reference image, however, and I'm gonna pull it so that the 3D cursor is right in the middle here of this so I'm going to select it and I'm going to press GX and move it like that and we may have to position it again all right I'm going to zoom back and I'm just using my scroll wheel so I'm going to assume that you know how to navigate around blender and you've used it a little bit before so we're going to create this and it may look ever so slightly different that's okay we're just going to use this as our reference image to model against all right, so I want to do this side view first. So with my 3D cursor right there, I'm gonna press Shift A, I'm gonna to come to Mesh, Circle, and it will default to 32 vertices, and that's a lot, but, but we're gonna go ahead and use that anyhow. So close that up, press Tab to go into Edit Mode, and with it selected, I like to do this in Vertex Mode, which is number one. You can go through these by pressing one, two, or three. So I'm going to rotate this now in the Y, to flip it up, RY90, and S to scale, and just pull until you think that it's reached the flat region underneath here and here, and it looks relatively, you know, centered. All right, so that's good. Now, let's take this and pull this to about where it would be for the flat region. Let's extrude back this way, pressing E, left click, and pull the X in the X direction, like that. Now we can go into wireframe if we want to see this a little bit better. And I'm zooming in and I'm just moving so I can see. All right, I'm going to pull that back just a little bit and let's create this angle here. We're gonna extrude out, E, left click, pull like that till it hits the end and then press S to scale and pull down until we get that. And it's scaled it in all directions down. Okay, Alt-A to deselect, Shift, Alt, and click. See, my screencast keys are on so you can see that. Press one to go back into front view, Z and choose wireframe. And I may pull that back ever so slightly, all right. Good enough. Let's create this slant now. E to extrude, pull it out, and then S to scale and pull it down. And we have this shape. Okay, good, so far so good. All right, I'm gonna press A to select it all, and I'm gonna rotate it, and we're gonna work on the back. So I'm gonna rotate around the Z axis, R, Z90, like that. Now I'm not sure if the front, let's let's do that again and watch it because this is the front, R, Z, 90. So that did flip so that this front part is facing us. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and slide it over, I'm in edit mode. I'm gonna slide it till it pretty much matches the diagram. 
and it's not perfect. So what I may do, I might do is I might select the background image and G Z and hold shift and pull down the background image until I feel that it matches this a little bit better. Okay, with that done, I'm gonna go back into edit mode, Alt A to deselect. I'm gonna press two for edge selection. You see it's changed from there. So if I press one, if I press one, it lights up there, two or three. Vertex edge or face selection. I'm gonna press two for edge selection. Shift Alt and click that edge. It doesn't really matter whether you're in edge selection or vertex selection. So just wanna look at this for a second. And okay, I think that's gonna be relatively fine. We'll do our, our bolts in a moment. Actually, let's go into wireframe. You can see actually that uh, this line that's selected is, is off the diagram a little bit. The white is, is a little bit higher here. So I'm actually gonna press S and I'm gonna hold shift. I'm gonna pull upwards and just bring it back a little bit. It matches the diagram a bit better in this view than on the side. Okay, now I'm gonna press E and S, and I'm gonna pull in to this white line to about the middle of there. And then there's a depression here. We'll do that in a moment. So we'll just create the polygons to create that by pressing E and S and pulling into there. We'll use these polys in a moment to create that depression. And then I'm just gonna S a little bit more. Now that's an actual pretty wide space but that's, that's okay. Now, we haven't filled that in yet. It's a hole, so I'm just gonna press F to make a face. Now, that is a big N-gon there, which means it's got more than four vertices uh, on this, you know, to make up this face. But that's not a problem because it's a flat piece and that will work fine for us, so we'll just leave it like that. Now, I'm gonna press three for face selection, so it's moved to there, and hover my mouse over one of these lines and hold Shift and Alt and click. And if you try it there and it doesn't work and you get the wrong stuff, just position it, keep trying until you get that whole thing. I'm gonna press E to extrude, and I'm just gonna gesture with my mouse in the Y direction now, back in. Or you can pull with this and create a little bit of an indentation. Now you don't have to go way back there. It just dips in a little bit. You know, something like that is gonna be fine. Now, all this hard work is going to change in a moment because uh, we are going to be breaking this when we put a mirror on. So we have this part, which is essentially the back. Now, I may have made an error before because I may have made the front and flipped it and then said, hey, we're looking at the front and then I did the back, but it doesn't really matter. We've got the back and we're good to go. And now we're going to take this and we're gonna go into edit mode, select it all, rotate Z 180 degrees. That'll flip it around. Now we're looking at the front and you can probably imagine what we're gonna do, go into wireframe and we're gonna move this over to here for the front. So just line it up as best you can, something like that. I'm gonna press Z and go into solid, and I'm going to select this edge. I'm in, ver I'm in face selection, so I'm gonna press two, shift alt and click there, and I've selected that whole edge. Press one, go into wireframe. Now, this edge is almost at the right position where this white area is. That's a flat region here on the watch sort of face area. So I'm just gonna press S and hold shift and just pull it in just a little bit more. And then to make this flat region, I'm gonna press E to extrude, left click, S to scale, and pull until we're there, about there. Just before the black area, which is an indentation. So I've now got this. I've got a flat region. All right, let's carry on in wireframe. To make that gap, we'll just make the polys first by pressing E and S, pull it in. So now I've got this area, I can indent that in a moment. And to fill it, we're gonna press F. Let's go back to solid view. So this area here is where we're gonna indent it. So let's press three for face selection. Shift, Alt, and click. 
to get that ring and we're going to extrude those back again you can just either pull on the y or you can gesture in that direction so i'm going to press e left click ah then i have to if you press left click you have to use that or gy now let's do that again press e and gesture in before left clicking i can pull it in without using the arrow so i just want it to go in a little bit so this is what we've got so far now we're going to be putting a subdivision surface on this and uh, we're just about ready let's save this first so Control s and then find a place to save this all right if i press Control one that's the same thing as coming over to the wrench and coming to modifier subdivision surface i don't want a second one and having one level and if i right click and shade smooth i'll get this now that's too smooth for a piece of metal and so we're going to go into edit mode and we're going to add some edge loops it's, let's alt a to deselect and uh, i'll show you how we're going to do this i'm going to press two for edge selection and i'm going to add some edge loops using beveling i'm going to shift alt and click this edge and this edge all right these are opposite the indentation which is is not looking very defined right now so we're going to bevel this we're going to press Control b and pull and there are i'm going to roll my mouse wheel back there are two two lines there i'm going to roll my mouse wheel up one so that i get a total of three now let's actually go out of, out of out of there let me let me redo that in fact this is probably better to see if i'm in flat shaded and if I turn on the cavity shader over here, you may be able to see that a little bit better. So I'm going to select here and here, and I'm going to control B and pull and roll back to zero and put one more. There's a little bevel. Now you have to figure out how far apart to pull these. You don't want to pull a terribly large amount, just a small amount to separate them out and roll your mouse up now if I put the subdivision on I've actually sharpened that edge a little bit I'm also going to come in here and control R to drop an edge loop and slide it up a little bit in that cavity and slide it down a little bit that's another control R if I go into shade smooth now you can see there's much more definition there let's let's continue all right I'm gonna do the same on this edge here I'm gonna control B to bevel Paul with two three subdivisions or three edges in there that will sharpen that up nicely now this is one sort of flat region we're going to be doing something on this so i want to do the same thing on this edge and this edge so i'm going to shift alt and click here and here so i've got both of those and i'm going to control b pull i'm holding shift and pull see the three lines there that go around and i just want i don't want it this narrow but i don't want it this wide i want it something like this and you'll get the feel of it when you when you do this how sharp you want those to be let's try that it's looking pretty nice let's come around to the back we're going to have to do this one control b and pull pretty much the same distance every on every one that's getting nice and sharp now oh yeah as we come to do the back notice that our reference image is in the way and you can't see it so let's select the reference come over here to this icon Come down here to side instead of both just click on front so it's invisible in the back select your model come down here and we're going to bevel this edge and this edge shift alt and click shift alt and click Control b hold shift start to pull roll back to two to two you can't roll anymore there's two edges roll up one more and then let's come in here control r pull up control r pull down and now we have a nice shape here all right so hopefully hopefully you followed that okay 
All right, let's add a couple more effects. Let's throw on the shadow. Let's change screen to both and pull these all the way up. We'll just make it look a little bit nicer. You can also come over to matte cap and choose a matte cap that you have. And I'm gonna choose this one. Now, I'm getting sort of a weird dark shadow here on this. It doesn't look very bright, and that's because my polys are probably flipped. So come to the uh, outline here, viewport uh, overlay, sorry, and face orientation, and notice it's red. That means my polys are facing outwards. It should be blue. So go into edit mode, A to select it all, Alt N, recalculate outside. So now it's blue. That means my polys are facing the right way. Turn that off. There, it's, it's shinier up there. I mean, it's still a little bit of a shadow, but it's not the same. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on these um, little buttons or dials. So lots of different ways to do these things. Uh, the way I'm going to do this is I am going to, let's see, let's put our 3D cursor in the middle of this watch. To, so let's select it, make sure it's all selected and shift S, cursor to select it. That brings the 3D cursor right into the middle there. Go back into object mode and one. That means when we bring in our object, it's gonna go in here rather than way down there. Okay, so let's start this. Now I'm gonna be putting a subdivision surface on this as well. So let's start not with 32 vertices, maybe like we did for, for the uh, watch main body. Let's do maybe 18. Shift A, mesh, circle, or you could use a cylinder. Before you do anything, come over here and change the number of vertices to 18. It's just a smaller number and it'll still look smooth. Go into edit mode and press one for vertex selection and S to scale. And then let's drag it along over here and then let's rotate this, so RY90. Let's drag it along a little bit more, S to scale. Now it's not perfectly on the diagram. We could move the diagram actually. Select it and press GZ. We're gonna move it downwards and move it downwards and then reselect this so because it's it lights up and you can see it a little bit better zoom in say okay i'm going to move it down a little bit more gz and just incrementally do that until you go okay that's that's pretty good if i scale that i can get that all right i'm going to position that about here i'm going to press e to extrude and pull out to about let's see let's pull out to about there i'm going to go into wireframe i'm just going to go to the other side of these black lines and then I'm gonna come down, E and pull out, and then S to scale, make it come down like that. I'm actually gonna come down all the way to about there. Let's press E to extrude and pull out to here. And then it gets a little bit wider. So we can press E and S and just hold shift and pull it up. E and extrude out to here and then E and S and pull it down to here, E and pull it out to there. And if it's not exactly on the diagram, don't worry about it, that's good enough. So that's what we've got. It came down, it came out straight, it came up a bit, down and out to there. Alt A to deselect. Shift and Alt and click there. We're gonna do one to there, but we're gonna extrude out first. E to extrude, left click, pull out to here, and by the way, sometimes when I have this, I don't like that, I just click on there. I just prefer that. S to scale. We come down to about there. It's sort of off the angle of the of the reference, but that's okay. And good enough, let's extrude it back into the body. E, come back to here. Let's go into solid view. You can press A to select it and period key to focus on it. Again, it's looking kind of with that weird shading, so it's flipped. So let's go Alt N, recalculate outside. All right, now we need to close up this area here. So I'm gonna press two for face edge selection, Shift Alt and click, and then F to make a face. Now, some people would prefer to go, uh, let's grab that again, E and S, and then merge at center, merge at center, or maybe another E and merge at center. And I, I don't tend to do that, I tend to just do F. That's fine, okay. 
I'm in object mode. I want to make sure there's no face on here we can delete. So let's slash key to focus just on that. And I see that it's open. There is no face, so I'm not going to worry about that. But we are going to have to smooth this out. So we're going to bevel it. And we're going to go into edit mode. And I'm going to put some bevels. And the most obvious place right now is these sharp pieces. But there's lots to do. Shift Alt to click that edge and that edge. Control B, pull. It should still have the three edges in there. If not, if you have there's two, roll up one more. Don't make it this big. Don't make it this sharp. Something like that. Okay, let's do the other obvious ones. Shift Alt and click this edge that goes around there and this edge. And bevel that with the same three, about the same distance. Now those are the main ones, but when I put a subdivision on, in object mode, if I go Control-1, and I right-click Shade Smooth, it looks like this. All right, that's not quite what we want, so I'm going to turn that off for the moment, and we're also gonna bevel some other edges. So shift alt to click here, Control-B, pull, make a small space similar to this one. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to shift alt and click that edge. And I'm going to control B, pull. There's another one. And this one. There's another one. Now when I put that on, I get this. And it looks just fine. Okay, slash key to bring the rest of the watch back. So this should be right in the middle of this space here as we create this thing here. All right, the next thing we want to do is to put some grip on here. Now, normally, you wouldn't want to do this in geometry because it creates a lot of polys. Um, I used to do that quite often, and I sometimes still do, but I would probably do that in texture, but I'm going to do this in modeling. So, to do it, we're going, and it's going to look good, we're going to go into edit mode, and I'm going to press 3 for face selection. It's just easier this way. And shift alt and click this so I can select this row of polys that goes all the way around. And I'm going to bring my 3D cursor there. Shift S and then cursor to selected. My 3D cursor is now right in the middle of this orange band. I'm going to deselect that because I don't need that. I'm going to go back in object mode. I just wanted my 3D cursor there, so I'm gonna bring something in here. I'm gonna bring in a separate object, actually. I'm gonna bring in another circle. Shift A, mesh circle. But I wanna change the number of vertices to a high number, like 64. So you can see why we're gonna be using a lot of vertices or a lot of polys. All right, so I'm gonna go into edit mode. One for vertex selection. I just find it easier. I can see the line better with all these circles on it, or little dots. Let's rotate this, rotate Y90 and then S to scale, and bring it down till it's just encompassing this part up, like there. And it can be a little bit out from it, that's fine. Press one, and we're gonna position this near the edge. It doesn't have to be right on the edge, like right around there. E to extrude and pull it out to till it's an equal distance to about there. We can always move this later, something like that. Now it looks to me like these polys are flipped, but we're not gonna do anything yet. Shift-Alt and click this edge that goes all the way around, and I want to extrude that into the actual dial itself because it doesn't look good just floating in space. E and S and pull downwards until it goes in. It doesn't really matter how much. Shift-Alt and click that row, E and S, and pull it in. Doesn't matter if they're exactly equal on both sides either. Now they are flipped, and I could prove that by going here. Uh, so select it all, Alt N, recalculate outside. Now they're nice and shiny, facing the right way. Okay, so we, what do we want to do with this? Press three for face selection, shift and Alt and click here. And we're gonna do something on this to make some thread-like stuff on here. I'm going to, I want each of these polys to be extruded outwards, but if I just press E and scale it out, it's all gonna be one piece. So I'm gonna use the inset command, I'm gonna press I, but I'm gonna press I again, so that's two eyes, and then pull my mouse in a little bit. And you can see that separates them from each other, sort of like inset, inset. Well, exactly like inset, inset. And so I can hold shift and I can pull my mouse in and out. So just pull it in, get a space. You don't want a tiny thing like that, unless that's what you're going for. And you don't want them joined, so just 
do something like that. All right, something like that. And then press E, click, Alt S. That'll scale them and then push along their normals, Alt S. I do that all the time and push them out. Now again, you don't want it coming out like that. Just push it out a little bit, something like that. So that it's like the tread of a tire, okay? Now I'm gonna select the whole thing and I'm gonna press S to scale. I'm gonna pull that whole thing, I'm holding shift, pull it in so that it's not sticking out too much. Just something like that. Then I'm gonna look from the front and I can always scale this in the X, SX to make it a bit wider so it fits the space. I can slide it along a little bit until I like the position. Go into object mode and that's the thing, but let's make it look a little bit better by beveling. So select it and let's come over here to the add modifier, choose bevel. Already it's starting to look better, but let's up the number of segments to three and change the amount to 0 0.02 and we can shade smooth and that is what we're going for right there okay and that's what it looks like now that has definitely increased our our number of polys and you can always come to here and go to statistics you can see the whole thing now is 25,000 uh, tries okay 12,000 and some faces split into tries is that all right, fine. So we have that that dial there. I'm not sure about this design, but uh, you can do whatever you want for that. All right, so let's do these two now. Uh, my 3D cursor is right there, so let's bring in another circle. Shift A, mesh, circle, but don't let it stay at, at 64. We can come all the way down to about 18 vertices for this. Go into edit mode, one for vertex selection, scale it down. Let's rotate Y90, and then just press G to grab or go and just pull it up here. Okay, zoom in a little bit, press R to rotate and tilt it so that it pretty much is the right angle, then S to scale until you get the size and the rotation that you need. I'm doing this in edit mode, by the way, not object mode. And once you've got that, press G, Pull it out to here, to where you want your knob to start. Go into solid view for a second. Uh, actually, there you just see it's a big open circle. With it selected, press F to make a face. Go back to one. It was important to do that because now I can switch to normal. And because I have a face, see this Z axis here, this blue arrow? It's now perfectly in line with this. So I can press E to extrude, pull down, and I can still take this in R to rotate or G to, to move it, whatever. And then I can come back and three for face selection, select that face, press one, and I can still move it a little bit. But I'm gonna press one for vertex selection because then I can see my dots easier. And I press E and S, pull them in. I can still see them glowing. Pull it in until it's the right diameter for the tube that leads down. That's good enough. E to extrude and pull it in. Now this is flipped because I can see weird shadows on it. Select it all, Alt N, recalculate outside. And I've created that one. We're gonna need to bevel this though. Press two for edge selection, Shift Alt and click there and there. And we can go back to global. That's our default setting for this because we're not gonna move it anymore. So I've got those two sharp edges, control B, pull, and again, I've got two segments there. I want three, I tend to default to three, and that's gonna be fine. But however, let's slash and look, and there's a face here, and so I'm gonna go into face selection, select that face, X faces, and delete any extra faces we don't need. All right, so I wanna put a subdivision on this, I think, I'm probably gonna to need to bevel here as well. All right, let's just watch. Control one, shade smooth. Yeah, I see the way it looks almost like a mushroom. So, turn that off for a moment by clicking on the TV. Press two for edge selection, shift alt and click there. Control B with the three edges, and we can turn it back on 
and it will get to go slash key and it's facing the right way and there's our knob all right now my 3d cursor is still right in the middle of this one which is sort of in the middle of where I would want both of these so we could mirror this one down to this position so with this one selected let's choose mirror and Z axis and uncheck X and we've got two of them there all right and this is what our watch is looking at if we want to look at the statistics again you can see we're at 28,000 all right so it is time now to do the bat ears of this thing and there are four of them as you can see and i don't want to do each of them separately so we're going to be using mirroring so that means we're going to have to cut this watch and that means we're actually going to lose this front face and the back face as you'll see but we'll just rebuild that so what we're going to do is select the main body go into edit mode and wireframe deselect everything and it might help to turn off the uh, subdivision surface for now press one for vertex selection and you can see these vertices are right in the middle here and there's a big end gone in the front and in the back and then they continue down what I want to do is I want to press B for box or border select and start dragging a rectangle out to encompass all of these leaving the vertical ones there and it might actually be helpful well we can we can do that first all right so I'm going to press X vertices delete those vertices I want to also delete the bottom ones because we're going to mirror from the top to the bottom so all I have to do, actually do is build one and I'll mirror it to there and down below so we're going to get rid of B to box select all these bottom vertices up to this horizontal line vertices but before I do that, in order for a mirror to work, I have to have my 3D cursor sort of pivot right in the middle. So I'm going to switch to, it doesn't matter whether I'm in one or in, in vertex or edge selection. I'm going to shift alt and click here and here. And then actually brings my gizmo right into the middle. And I'm going to shift that cursor to selected. I brought my 3D cursor right into the middle of the watch. Now I'm going to delete these ones. And there was an easier way to do it that way. All right, I'm going to go back into object mode and leave it like that. I'm going to add a mirror there. And if we don't see it in the X, what I need to do is select my, my uh, piece of the, of the watch and set the origin to the 3D cursor. And now I have it on both sides. Here I'll hide the X, there's the X. See the red arrow across the X and across the Z. However, I generally want to have the mirror above the subdivision, which I've turned off. I can turn it back on and let's look in solid view. Now, sometimes you'll have a little bit of a line here and you'll have to manipulate a bit. I'm gonna turn on clipping as well so that if I happen to pull any pieces apart, they would stay stuck together. Now, you don't have to worry about that right now. You'll notice there's a big hole in it, okay, because we cut away some of it in the front of the back. We're just going to rebuild that. All right, but we are set because if we go into edit mode, all I have is that piece. And if I make a change to this one piece and do that, it's going to do it on the top and the bottom. That's not what I'm going to do, though, but it's close. I'm going to select... I believe it is these three faces. I'm gonna look at one. And those three faces, this one, this one, and this one, pretty much make up the size of this thing, or at least the, oh, I don't know what you would call that, the distance of that thing. So what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna press E to extrude, and I'm gonna pull up in the Z to make those bat ears. Now it's not gonna to look too nice for a while. We're gonna to have to do some manipulation here. So, I'm going to press 1 for vertex selection and go into wireframe mode, deselect, and then I'm going to start moving points to try and roughly get this shape. Now, there's points, yeah, let's go back a little. There's points in the front and in the back. So, I'm going to do this in wireframe 
and I'm going to box select just like that just really quickly box select I might as well start there I've actually got the front and the back point I don't want to just move one and I'm gonna press G and I'm gonna just pull with my mouse and sort of position it where I think it should go box select these G pull that down oops do this in orthographic front view box select these pull them in box select these and it's just going to take some manipulation go back into solid view to see we're starting to get somewhere it's going to take some manipulation you want to do this in wireframe so move them around until you start to approximate this shape Now the next thing we're going to do, once we start to get this, and by the way, we're gonna be going up one more level, so let's increase down here the subdivision one more. That's gonna smooth it out, that's even better. Right in the middle, we're gonna go Control R to drop an edge loop, and that has straightened it out, but we're gonna split this to the left and the right using bevel, Control B, pull, but roll back so you just have two edges going, one to the left, one to the right. Pull out, but don't come right to the very end. Come to maybe about there, and then check it out. And notice it's gotten a lot sharper, and it, it comes from here, and it just comes up. And we are getting close to the shape that we want here. So let's go back in and see if we can manipulate this a little bit more. I'm going to try dropping an edge loop in here control R just come over here click and then grab these and pull them in and let's see what that looks like now we're getting that curve there okay we can go back into wireframe and then we could take this one we could pull it out a little bit and maybe box select these and pull it down a little bit more you can also grab these and just relieve some of the tension try to just imagine a naturally flowing curve that's not too you know jarring in any way that's maybe even a little bit much but okay that's not looking too bad I would say we are just about there there's one more thing we could do instead of this complete hill it comes up a little straighter, it's a bit sharper here. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in and you see this edge here, which includes this edge, this edge, and this edge. If I select all of that, I'm gonna press two for edge selection and select that, this, and this. If I could sort of sharpen just that piece, I mean, you can pull it if you want. Uh, I think we would approximate this a little bit better. So with that selected, and just looking a little bit sort of from a perspective, but also almost front on. I'm gonna press Shift E, and you can see I've got a double arrow with a dotted line, and if I start to pull, I'll talk about what this is in a minute, just watch it. You see it's moving towards there. It's getting sharper and sharper, like a crease. This is called mean crease. And I don't always wanna pull it to the extreme. I'm gonna pull it to about there I'm gonna let go and I've created a sharp point that may or may not be exactly what we want and we may want to manipulate that move it this way or that I'm gonna press N and come over here to let's see this one here the very top you can see mean crease I'm going to drag it and pull it, and that changes the color. There's one, there's zero. So you can do it this way. So it was shifty was the, the, the key to start it, and then you just pull to where you want it. Maybe I'll go to about point 0.6. And to close that side panel, Alt A to deselect, and that's happened on all of them. Now this is a piece of metal, so it can be relatively sharp. You don't want it so sharp that it cuts you, but I don't think that would look like it would cut you. So, so we have that, and I'm happy with that. 
and just looking it over so it comes out and it goes up and it comes down I may do the watch band at some point putting like a cylinder in there and creating it, but for now we're doing the watch body so I think that looks good and so I've got it on all of them and at this point in time I think I am ready to apply the mirror so I'm going to apply the mirror and generally after you do a mirror I like to come in select it all M for merge and choose merge by distance and just see if any vertices weren't merged and are merged together now just to be on the safe side but we did fine so that's that's good like that let's rebuild the uh, front and back now come in and I'm going to in edge selection shift alt and click the outermost edge and it's sometimes hard to do so you may have to turn off the subdivision because I had a bit of a bevel here before and that's a bit of a problem because I'm going to press F to make a face. Uh, we'll see what kind of a bevel I have on there. And it may look a little bit sharp because I deleted that face, but we had put in edge loops. And so what I'm going to do here, this is the new edge right there. But this one and maybe another one, maybe that one were from before probably actually this one and then one on the other side but I'm going to delete both of those in fact I could probably even get rid of that one I'm going to dissolve those edges and I now just have a straight piece here so I'm going to shift alt and click this edge here and control B to bevel and pull and I want two three let's go back and put on the subdivision and still actually a bit sharp I didn't separate it out very much uh, actually I've got a better way of doing this so let's just do this all right um, this is looking a little bit sharp and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press 3 for face selection and select this face I'd inset and pull it in and that will put another edge um, sort of equidistant to this edge which is our original edge and then this edge and now the new edge and it'll be a little bit softer if that matters to you all right, I'll do probably a similar thing on the back. So let's come back in here and two for edge selection, shift alt and click that edge, F to make a face. And it's not looking too bad, a little bit sharp. So let's go I to inset and just pull it in a little bit away from that edge. And now it's a bit softer, it still looks pretty nice. All right, so this is what we have so far. So we're going to finish it off by putting some bolts on the back. And as you can see on the reference image, I just have circles. And there's nothing wrong with doing that. But I want to show you something else that you can do. So let's come in here. Let's press Control 1 to look from the back. My 3D cursor is still right in the middle. Um, let's put in some actual... Uh, screw heads. There's many different ways to make these and I'm going to show you uh, one of the ways that you can do that. That I haven't seen too many people do this. I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, Plane and I'm going to go into Edit Mode, Rotate X 90 so that it faces me. I can't see it. I'm going to pull it out of the back and Control 1 to look from the back. I'm going to scale it down a little bit. We can make it smaller later on. I'm going to move it up roughly to where it's going to be. We'll position this in a bit and scale it. All right, so I have just a plane. I want to make uh, a screw head. So I'm going to Control R to drop an edge loop right in the middle. Let it be. Control R, right click, left click. Let it be like that. So I've just split this up into four. Shift Alt and click this edge. Shift Alt and click this edge. I'm in edge selection, by the way. Control B to bevel and pull roll back to zero so you just have like a cross all right this is going to make the like the x in in the bolt in the screw head the <laughs> bolt screw head so just try maybe a size like that deselect three for face selection select here 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 and here and delete those faces okay let's select here 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 and here edges delete edges so now I have just that all right so once again I selected these edges X edges so I have the outline of a cross I'm gonna press 1 for vertex selection I can see my vertices I want to round these a little bit up to make a little bit more of a pleasing 
shape of my uh, screw screw head. So with those vertices selected, I'm going to bevel. And uh, in order to bevel, I can't just go Control B because they're individual vertices. Uh, I have to go Shift Control B and then pull like this. You see this separated from each other. I mean, you know, you can make a cool shape with this as well. I'm just going to pull them. I'm holding Shift, by the way, to move a little bit slower. Roll my mouse up one so I actually have three vertices. Click. So I have this rounded shape like that. Select it. Now, I'm going to press E and S. Start to pull out like that. It's looking really weird. Right click and choose Loop Tools, which is likely installed in your Blender version. If not, it's a free add-on that needs to be um, installed through the Edit Preferences. And choose Circle. Scale it out a bit more so it's not like cutting into it. And you now have a cross inside a circle. So just pull out as much as you think is reasonable for your screw head. All right. I'm going to deselect. There you can see it. I'm going to slash key to focus on that. Take it all. Alt N. Recalculate outside so that the polys are facing one way now. We're not going to worry about whether they're facing inwards or outwards yet. Let's build the rest of this. Two for edge selection. Shift Alt and click that edge. E to extrude, pull back this way, and maybe flare it out a bit. E to extrude, pull back this way. Something like that. Okay. Now I'm going to shift alt and click on the cross. E to extrude, pull it back a little ways. And then I'm just going to F to make a face. And then I'd inset to pull it in a little bit like that. Still in edge selection, shift off to click the cross itself. So it goes all the way around and we're gonna bevel this edge because we're gonna add a subdivision surface and we need to have some highlights. Control B is fine. Pull, do something like this. Give yourself a nice wide bevel with three, that's, an, that's okay. We're also gonna have to bevel these edges. Control B, pull, not too big, not too small like that. Something like that. And this one too. Control B. All right, let's check this out. Let's just Alt N, recalculate outside one more time. Merge by distance is always a good idea. Control 1, shade smooth. One more thing to do Control R here and pull down. And that should help with any of the squishing or the pulling. And you have sort of a neat bolt. I think that might be a little deep. So what I'm going to do is in face selection, I'm going to select that bottom face and I'm going to press control plus to expand my selection a couple times. I don't want to bring it up to that high. I want to pull this up, control minus to come down a little bit and then just pull this whole bottom floor up to where you think is a reasonable depth. Slash key and we have a very big bowl. Let's go in and scale it down. Now let's look from the front in wireframe and see what we're going to do with this. Ah, we need to move everything over to here to see where to, to place them. Or you can just do it any way, any position that you want. But to be consistent, I will, with that selected and the body and all of the dials, so I've got all of it, I will move it over. I'm going to move it over. Now notice that the dials are on the wrong side. Okay. But that's that's okay because I'm going to move it back in just a second. I just want to get the position for this bolt. Ah, and there's one thing that I forgot to move, which is this. So I'm going to, I'm going to back up. And I'm going to make sure that I select that as well in addition to my bolt. Screw, bolt, whatever. I'm going to pull it all over and... It doesn't have to be exact. Okay, control one to look from the back. No, I don't need to look from the back. I can look from the front in wireframe. There we go. Okay, so I've got my my screw there. I'm gonna and I'm I'm in edit mode and I'm gonna bring it up. And it's pretty much the right size. I'm not gonna screw around with that. Let's just go into solid view and let's drag that back until it makes contact. There it is. 
Right. Keeping in mind that will go against your wrist, so however much you decide you want to push that in, maybe to about there. And we could do that. Okay. Control one to look from the back. I want to copy this around here, so I'm going to select on my watch body something that is central, like this region here in face selection, select that, shift S, cursor to select it. Bring my 3D cursor there so that I can rotate around that central thing with respect to the watch body. Select this, I'm gonna go into edit mode, and I'm gonna to switch to 3D cursor. That puts this as my pivot. So if I go Shift D, rotate 180 degrees while I'm looking orthographic on it, I don't wanna do that from an angle like that. All right, I have it right down there. A to select it all, Shift D, rotate 90. I have my screw heads. The only thing is I don't necessarily want them all in the same orientation, so I might come back in, box select, and then control L to make sure it's all selected. Control one to look from the back. I'm gonna go back in just a median point. That's the default. And now I might just go R and just make it off center a little bit. Select a bit, control L, R, just rotate it a bit. I'll leave those other ones. Okay, now, in order to make moving this back a little easier, let's just box select everything. Double check that I've got it all. Yep. And let's M, new collection, let's call this watch. So that I can always come in here and I can hide my, that, I can hide the watch if I want. I can right click and select object and then I'll get all my watch, look from the front, drag this over to here and I will hide that and I now have this so there's my watch and it's always fun at this point to switch to a different mat cap and have a look at it make sure nothing is flipped maybe you like those bolts maybe you think they're a little bit big I sort of feel like they're a little bit big but I'm going to leave them for now all right try different things now you may not have all these mat caps some of them I've got from a various sources, but just to look at how smooth it is, I think it looks really cool. All right, so we're gonna leave it at that for the time being. We'll come back and continue to work on the watch uh, body, watch face, and uh, hope you're enjoying the video. Hopefully you learned something and I didn't go too quickly. If you have any questions, ask me in the comments, send me an email, whatever. Good luck, and we'll see you again soon.